Yes, Clement, you were speaking, right? Yes, please, I was. Please start your question. You are listening. I wanted to know, uh, using YouTube as, as uh, an illustration, you can see that some likes on YouTube are sometimes mind-blowing because someone posts a video that doesn't even, uh, that the person did not even, that we even have a single, a single like, but you see almost about thousand likes. What, what about that one too? Yes, bots works there. YouTube, we have a whole lot of bots account. Now, let me tell you, <laughs> when you actually get the chance to work with these big, big company as a data scientist, you will realize that most of them have or have bots among their users more bots so you you actually see a lot of for example twitter someone will post within seconds 10k likes yes they are bots but bots in in one way also help the company to actually sell to uh, investors and tell them look i have the numbers so come and advertise on my team so that i can get money this is what they do but bots they are parts so it's part so that it will actually make people more people use youtube you get it christopher do you want to talk right let's go oh. okay let's continue now recommendations as we speak the last time so recommendations is where you like let me say you have a netflix account or a netflix subscription every time you log into your account you go for action movies now you see the next time you log into your account you see action movies new action movies coming they will be giving you pop-ups, recommendations, this is here, this is that, they are all action movies. So it's your data. What you've been doing there is stored. Whenever you log in, something is monitoring you, whatever you are doing. So the system knows that you, Tom, always come for action movies. And so whenever you log in, the system will automatically use your data and pop up all action movies to you so that it's its main goal here is to keep you coming to the site so recommendations also help in making recommendations that's data scientists your work too pattern detection and group and grouping pattern detection and grouping okay so here we want to actually see the number of okay we have this app there that helps doctors to actually determine the sickness you carry so this app actually has been fed with symptoms of malaria symptoms of hiv symptoms of whatever disease you can think of now when you come then this app you enter all your symptoms to this app this app is going to draw a pattern then group so you have headache key headache so the the app will go in ma malaria malaria is a person supposed to have headache you see okay there is headache then maybe see hiv too there is headache okay then come again and come and pick so by the end of picking and grouping at the end you will see that the system will be able to find out one particular thing that's unique to only one disease and hence we say okay this person is actually suffering from this particular disease that's for the grouping and pattern detection now we have anomaly detection that is a fraud detection and those stuff 
the last time we met we made i made an example of this fraud detection whereby i used bank now as a data scientist you feed your system or your database or whatever system you are using with a the vital data now maybe you are a data scientist for a certain bank now the data you've given to the database or the system using is going to make sure whenever someone starts performing transaction it actually corresponds or the details the person will enter corresponds to the details you have in your database if the person enters any detail that's not in your database it is going to be flagged as a fraud so data science is also used in fraud detection so all these fraud detection, all these, let me see, when someone performs transaction, you see there is something not normal. The work of data scientists. Okay, now we go to recognition. This is facial recognition, test, image, audio. So the last time I made, I made reference, reference to, for example, you have those who uses Microsoft Windows. You have this assistant called Cortana. Oh, let me see. Am I recording? Okay. Cortana. So you see, when you start, Cortana will tell you to set up your voice with your voice. So you see, Cortana will tell you, say hi, you say hi, say hello, you say hello. So as you are doing that, it is noticing your voice. It is recording, it is keeping data of your voice. So whenever you want to use Cortana as a security feature or to open your laptop, you come and you speak. Cortana is going to detect and know that, oh yes, it is you. The same way works with um, those who uses the, the face detection app on your phone or the, the face detection unlock on your phone. So the first time you are using, they will tell you, place your head, head well, tilt it, do this, do this. Or then it will be drawing patterns on your face. You will see it on your phone. All this while, it is going to keep these patterns somewhere so that the next time you try to log in, it will take a pattern of your face, then compare it with the first one it had then open it for you now someone might decide to ask this funny question what if after setting up this facial pattern maybe a few months later a few days later you go and make plastic surgery <laughs> you go and make plastic surgery now you go, for example, if you don't understand, this is what I'm trying to, you got your new phone or your new laptop. Then you want to set up a facial, um, um, yes, a detection or unlock a face detection. Then you go and set it. So you see, you see the app will be, will be telling you, place your head well, place it like this. Then it will be drawing part, part, patterns on your face. After that, it will save it. Okay. The next time you come, you you bring your face to detail you see okay it is you then open what if the next time you come you go and done plastic surgery on your face what's going to happen please who can tell me something anyone to tell me something the next okay yes yes uh, i think uh, it might correspond because it's it's half certain uh Features that it's picked from your face, and those features are irreplaceable, regardless of what's happened to you. Yes, yeah, so using using that pattern, it could detect maybe uh, especially the eye. The eye was this, the color was this, is this and that, and so it won't be very difficult for you to detect it. Okay, thank you. And uh, in other on the other side, maybe could we just if the other. Uh, pattern doesn't really, really match up with what. Okay.
Okay. Any anyone with another view? You set your facial uh, detection today. The next day you go and do plastic surgery. So you are coming to open your phone. Do you think it will open? Anyone again? Okay. Thank you, Clemens, for your for your contribution. Now, take note of this. When you set up or when you are setting up a face recognition, this is what it does. The system takes your face in a shape. So you see. Some of us, our face are circle. Some of us, our face are oval. Some are box. Some are rectangle. Some are triangle. Okay. It takes in a particular shape. Now that shape, after taking that shape, it's going to measure distances. We call it metrics. So this is what it, this is how it works. So the the system will be like from from so let me do a demonstration from your notes from your nose from the from i want to make an expert okay let me see if i have a picture then i'll be pointing it so that you all can see let me try and get a picture so that i can understand this very well Let me download the picture from Google and quickly less useful. Please, we can't hear you again. Or it's from me. I, I can't hear you. Yes, I'm coming. I don't know if you are talking, though. I'm coming. Okay. Okay, so let me show you this. So that, uh, what is it? okay let's see how facial detection works so you see this is how it works when you show your face to the system the system remember it's not a human being or it's not an intelligent something it has been programmed to do or it has been given instructions to do that now you may you might think it knows your face it doesn't know your face it knows the pattern of your face okay so this is it now when you show your face this face to the camera then it start drawing pattern so you see please watch where my mouse is passing it has drawn a specific shape around your face specific shape I don't know if this is octagon or hexagon or something. It's a shape. 
Okay. Now, you see, after drawing that shape, inside there's a distance, 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 distance. It's called geometric. Now, the distance from here to your eyebrow here is calculated. Each of us has a, a, a unique distance for that. The distance from your forehead here to here is different. The distance from here to here is different for each of us. So this is how it draws your face. And it starts making these patterns on your face. Then it captures it. Fine. Now, you've given the system this. Then the next day, you go and do plastic surgery, then you come. Meanwhile, the plastic surgery you went to do, you went to shrink your face so that it will become small. Maybe initially your head was big, so you wanted it to become small. Okay. You, you, so the system, when you show it to it again, is going to see if it is there. So it's going to draw again. Then it starts calculating. When it calculates here, now it takes the distance here and compares it with the the, the previous distance, if it's not the same, it's not going to open. It won't even continue. It will tell you fast. Invalid face or something or error. So if you go and you make the surgery, I don't know the type of surgery you are going to make. Either you are going to make your eyes big or something. It depends on the surgery you are going to make. If you go and make surgery that, let me say, alters your whole face to the extent that the calculations of your face, the distance between your various vital organs changes. When you come back, the system won't open for you. It will tell you you are a different person because the system used calculations and per this data it has stored, it is not corresponding with your new face you are bringing. But should you go and do plastic surgery, then maybe you want to change your mouth. Uh, maybe it, your mouth was small. You want you went to add some so that it will be bigger, small. Then let me see your nose here. Maybe the hole here it was small, so you made it more bigger. It doesn't calculate these holes, do, but the length of from your forehead to your nose tip is the same if it didn't change any of this pattern it will open for you any question so this is how face detection work it doesn't know your face no it knows the patterns on your face so it has calculated it has made geometric calculations Okay, please, any question? In no question, we are continuing. Right. Now, actionable insights of view dashboards report. Okay, so this is exactly what I illustrated to you. So for the sake of those who just joined, let me show you the analytics one. Where is Moki? So here is it. So you see the dashboard giving you the various analytics, number of viewers, number of time spent by each user, speed, side speed. These are the work all the work of a data so it is using the data of the visitors visiting this particular system to give you this actually calculations okay let's move on very fast now we have automated processing and decision making automated processing. hello sir yes please Oh, please, I don't. I didn't intend to interrupt, but I heard you said you should download a certain app. Yes, the app is R Studio. R Studio. R Capital. Oh. Yes. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. 
and and your assignment is go and get Twitter the data set. Go and download it and keep it. We'll be using that for our practice, practical work. And hope everyone here is aware of your MTN project, whereby you are to take one. So for the for the for the benefit of the new people here, MTN says it's giving actually they are going to give three slots to students, but they are going to give two slots specifically for data science students, then uh, some gifts for data science to them because they actually need data scientists in their company. So the challenge has been thrown to you guys. Take any of the MTN services and you as a data scientist analyze the service now note down your point what you think is wrong with that service make your suggestions to that to to, to improve upon that and should your suggestion be taken what do you think will be the future of that particular service that's your prediction and you predict it please make sure the work you do you don't you don't just go and sit down and just write anything please you are presenting this an official uh, work it is going to be forwarded to MTN manager and they are going to choose the best. Do well to do your best. Yes, do your best. Anyone can just win it and it will grant you opportunity. Your, your, your job is assured when they take you. They are going to train you well. Yes, they are going to, according to our deal, they are going to train you take you through a whole lot, assign you to people to train you, then they take you as their own. So please take it very serious, this assignment. You are submitting it next two weeks. So this week is there for you to, so next two weeks, we will, we will get the, a way how to submit your work. We will communicate it to you then, you will submit your work. Then we forward it to them, for them to analyze it. Please don't go and do any shoddy work. Sit down, then plan the thing, then do it well. Attach your official name, then your active email address. Don't add your mobile number. Some of you are using Vodafone. Some of you are using TV. If you add it, hmm. uh, I don't know, we can't predict him as. But the opinion will be like, this boy is using TV and he wants to get uh, award or something from MTN. So don't add your mobile number. Even if you are using MTN, you don't add. Just add your active email address. Okay. So let's continue. Okay. Automated processes and decision making. Now, this is where the credit card people come inside. Now you 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 intend to buy something online using your credit card. I will teach you something called algorithm. Let me see if I'll get a flow chart and show it and explain it to you. I want you to understand every single step. A flow chart. Flow chart diagram flow chart okay flow chart diagram okay Okay, I've gotten one. Let me show it to you so that you understand this particular point visually. Okay, very nice. Let me share my screen. 
please watch it very carefully now this is a flow chart diagram when we talk about a flow chart or oh, this is the algorithm what's an algorithm An algorithm is the systematic way of how things are being done or the step-by-step -step way of how things are being done now credit card processing so when whenever you use your credit card online this is what goes through and is the work of a data scientist let's go now you order or you place your order with your credit card selected as payment method so you visit that e-commerce website you select everything into your card you go to payments then you select visa card or your card credit card for payment now transaction started in order system okay now when you start then you it will tell you to input input your 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 card number and your three digits at the back of your card okay now it's going to validate through verified by some of you using visa some of you using mastercard so depends which one you are using it's going to uh, validate from these people after that it proceeds then it asks this question is the credit card the person using valid valid here means is it up to date now how can it find that your credit card is up to date meaning there is a database of your bank you the data scientist you are the bank that bank now you have you have a whole database whereby every card's date renewal date issue date expiry date is inside so when the system gets here its credit card valid is going to go to this database and see the date of expiry if the date of expiry is 2005 it will reject it but if it says in your in your database it's maybe 2025 to say okay yes proceed then it proceed from there then come to this state when it says no it will take this route so the customer will be rejected using that payment method and will go back into and, and will be asked to choose a different payment method or use a different visa card that's when the card is not valid but when it's valid then it can it will ask another question are the funds or the money available in that particular bank account is it is it enough you can't perform transaction online with an empty account no now here it will go back to the you data scientist your database and verify again now tom Tom's account is maybe five hundred dollars. Tom is purchasing two hundred dollar or two hundred dollars something. Now here he says yes. Oh okay, that means the account here is let me see it has enough money to to perform this transaction. Okay, then it start transaction completed in other system. So you will receive an email or some of you will receive an SMS now see here this is the customer information database transactions entered in ledger entries are reconciled at the end of month then accounts receivable so you see this database is for you the data scientist this is where you'll be comparing all these questions this is a decision making so when it gets here it's going to make decision is the credit card valid if no reject it and let the person select a different payment method if yes proceed so it says yes then it proceeded then ask again are the funds are funds available or are the funds enough for the purchase the person must done if yes proceed and let the transaction goes through you receive an email confirmation then the bank will record every transaction made so that maybe someday you'll be you might need those history you go there you ask for bank statement or something you get it here this is the work of a database or data scientist 
to actually keep this data in your database so that the system will use the data you've provided to make decisions. So this is a decision which, is, which was being made by the system based on the data you, the data scientists you've provided. Let's, 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 let's say if you are not provided this system any data. So when it gets to the decision and asks, is the credit card valid? What do you think the credit is going to do here? It's going to stop because there is no confirmation here or there is no verification where the system is actually going to verify, okay, that, okay, this. So data scientist, you provide the system with the data. The system will use that data to make decisions. This in terms of credit card payments online. This is what goes through whenever you make payment online using your credit card. Any question? Right. Let's move on. Okay. So we have scoring and ranking. Scoring and ranking will I'll quickly go through this and we'll use the rest of the time for questions. Then we will be done for the class. Okay. Scoring and ranking. Now, this I made an example of this football website. So you visit the football website like livescore.com, go.com, these football sites. Then you want to view the league table of each one. How does the system know that this team should be on top? This team should this team should be at the bottom. Now it depends on the data being given to the system and what the system has been told, instructed to do. So the data scientists provided this data. Now look, the team with the highest points should be on top of the table. And so immediately the a team gets the highest point, that team is going to move automatically to the top of the table. And in scoring to when a team scores, you will see some of these football sites, the team which scores names will be highlighted. How does the system know that this team scored and so it should be declared as the winner? The data scientist provided data gave instructions that look the team which will get more goals in this particular match should be declared as the winner and so it happens and the team declares as a winner any question segmentation does demographic based marketing people in shiashi actually like eating eating wachi yes now, you as a data scientist, you want to help Hajia somewhere. Hajia is not getting customers. So you want to help her. Now, you, see, you, you go to Shiashi and study the region of Shiashi. Now, you notice Shiashi people like or prefer Wache with Gari. Based on this, you come to Hajia. Hajia based on my analysis and everything i've done go to shiashi set up a watch base add gary to it to your to your things people are going to buy and you make a huge profit hajia will listen to you go there and do the exact same and you see hajia will be getting the money or the people she was expecting this is demographic based marketing or you are in a company the company want to open a branch and last time i use kfc you'll be in your one corner or in your in your in your in your town there is no kfc but all of a sudden you see kfc has come and open a branch now it's not that kfc was then well it's like oh there is no branch here we should go and open no kfc noticed people in adenta or people here 
or people in Shiash or people here, people in Legon campus or people in Accra actually purchase KFC a lot. And so we are going to set a branch here. So you see within within few months, KFC has been opened and you see number of people trooping in. This first under demo.